Welcome back. Joining me for a look at the equities space is Otto Makwenju from Tribe Investments. Otto, thanks so much for joining us today. Now, global markets are on track to end off the week on a sour note on the back of the tensions that are playing out in the Middle East. Somewhere in between the week around Tuesday, Wednesday, we had expected um, things to sort of calm down because we are not seeing a retalia retaliation from um, Israel. But today we had media reports on explosions in Iran that has spurred yet another sell-off. That There's a flight to um, safety in the meantime with gold trading above $2,000. How concerning are these tensions for you, Otwa? Uh, well, those ones in particular are very uh, concerning, uh, mm -hmm. given also the, the different partners that the, uh, the regions have. So for Israel, you have the U.S. and U.K. Uh, might have to come into the, the uh, everything that's happening. And um, we are seeing... It, it, it may not, you know, translate immediately, but we uh, we saw um, in Iran they said that what's happening they they, they downplayed it basically that mm. uh, the the shots didn't actually hit anything, but it is very concerning right now um, because it is, is first of all these are all producers. The U.S. did say they also want to sanction Iran, mm. and that could cause more uh, tension, you know, in the region even further. So it right now. The, the retaliation from Iran, I mean Israel, sorry, that if it didn't happen, things were looking to be cooling off a bit more. But with today, this morning's uh, situation, it does seem to have raised tensions even further. Now, volatility remains the name of the game, Otto, and the nervousness has also filtered through to the local unit. The last time I checked, it was trading above 19.20 to the dollar. What are your sentiments around the local units in general? I mean, we do have these geopolitical tensions playing out, but we also have that national election um, coming up in the next month. Yes, uh, locally we are in a very tight spot right now. Uh, also, the, the thing, uh, in, with, especially with regards to uh, the election, right now in the first time since '94, it's not clear who the winner will be, and so it's not clear what the outlook of the country and the uh, the way forward is going to look like. So it is quite uh, stressful right now for anyone who's involved. Hence, the the uh, rand also weakening so much, mm. um, and I mean. Well, that's very concerning right now. Um, I think that if things turn out worse, we could even see uh, we, uh, you know, all prices go up, uh, which will then also affect us with uh, inflation and the fight we're currently doing with the interest rates, which could just make things uh, a bit unbearable for the consumer here in South Africa. And, you know, I do not want to see that oil price continue to go up because, you know, that means for us also in terms of uh, what's this petrol prices. And I mean, we have another hike expected next month. So even more I, um, hikes adding further pressure to the consumer that's already constrained in an environment of high interest rates and elevated inflation. Now, geopolitical issues aside, uh, rate cut bets were also in focus. We started off the year strong, right, with markets pegging in rate cuts even from the first uh, quarter, the second quarter of the year. And then inflation proved to be sticky and those bets were moved back to September. But now Powell's comments have further spooked uh, traders with some even writing off rate cuts fully for the year. Where are you when it comes to um, expectations of Fed rate cuts? Uh, I mean, I, I'm following those expectations. I think this year might be off the cards right now. Uh, mm. You know, in the beginning of the year, everyone was excited. Inflation was steady on the downside in America. Uh, so that's why, you know, anticipation of uh, it cuts were, were very high. But as you said, you know, inflation has been sticky, especially if you look at the last print. Mm. And for getting uh, inflation alone, we also look at... Um, uh, job numbers, which were very strong, uh, so meaning the economy is still very, you know, hot right now. So keeping uh, keeping it here for longer is not really going to be a viable solution for the Fed, in, in my opinion. So that's why I'm saying e either they could wait and, and try and hold it off and, and, and not raise rates, but it might be necessary for them to even raise rates even once more uh, if things, especially with the geopolitics uh, happening right now, continue mm -hmm. to escalate. Now let's move over to some company news. International earnings season is heating up. We saw numbers from Netflix earnings and revenue up uh, after it added over 9 million subscribers in the first quarter. What did you make of those numbers? 
Oh, those were uh, excellent numbers. Mm. Uh, Netflix, uh, you know, has been beating the the streamers, uh, your Disney's, etc. It seems to be a way ahead, thanks to firstly, you know, the uh, by by adding the the a password share, uh, cracking down on that a bit. So they, they by doing that, it, it does seem that it is helping their subscriber base. So I think you know Netflix is showing some great, great numbers right now. Also, if you look at the the net income that they're bringing in, is quite strong. Um, however, if you look at the share price, you saw a five percent drop mm -hmm. uh, yesterday, and a lot of people are stating that or looking at the fact that they said that going forward, they're not no longer focusing on um, the subscriber numbers, so they won't be reporting that anymore. Um, however, they also are doing a lot of good things. Uh, for example, they're now in integrating live sports into the to the mix. So I think that's going to help them as well going forward. Uh, and and I, for me, I think Netflix right now is in a very good position, and they seem to have beaten out the competition they were facing a year or two ago. You know, that password crackdown really came at me very strongly because sharing <laughs> really is caring, Otto. <laughs> Let's move over to TSMC, also posting upbeat first quarter earnings, um, benefiting from that AI boom. Is TMC one that you like? I, I do like the business itself. Uh, I mean, obviously, because of the monopoly they have. Uh, and it does seem like things are going well. However, there is going to be, a, 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 I think, you, if you look forward, uh, there's a bit of a concern on my end in particular, because 20% of their revenue comes from um, Apple. Ah. And now Apple is struggling in, um, in the Asian markets, more specifically in China. So we could see, you know, this... Uh, this rally that they're currently facing or what they're looking uh, they're seeing right now in terms of uh, revenue that they bring in might plateau uh, going forward let's get into your stock pick quickly before i let you go uh, my stock pick today is Sunlam. Sunlam it has been showing uh, great growth, uh, and they, I mean the acquisitions that they've been doing over the past year have been great, especially if you look at uh, uh, the Indian acquisition and buying interest in that business. I think that's going to be good for the business going forward, and that's why it's my stock pick today. Otto, thanks so much for your time and those insights. That was Otto Amakwenchu from Tribe Investments.